Welcome to the Sector Spin with Terry. In this video series, I share with you what I'm watching each week in various sector industry subgroups. This week, I'm going to show you the leading industry groups here in the materials sector. Now first, let's start with the weekly RRG of the S&P sectors. And for clarity, I'm just going to look at the leading sectors here. I want to animate this for you back a little bit. So follow, uh, follow the industrials, which started down here after a consolidation down into the weakening quadrant, pushed over into the lagging just a little bit, and then started moving vertically through the month of March, and is now back up here into the leading quadrant. Now also back about the same time, this is the XLB. This is the materials sector. This materials sector was kind of wishy-washy and I've been telling our clients that there's a little bit of indecision in the investors I think in jumping back into this sector and I think that's why there was such a zigzag motion here. So follow that as we animate that through the month of March and you can see there's that hesitation again where it decided, eh, I'm not, maybe I'm not ready to go. But then in the last couple of weeks now, we're, we're cleanly seeing northerly vector here. I'm actually seeing an acceleration here. If you look at the velocity factor there, it's 0 0.36 versus 0 0.23 from this week to last. And today's only Thursday, and this only includes Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday's data in this very last line segment. So seeing materials accelerate here rapidly, possibly going to follow the industrial sector back up here into the leading quadrant soon. I'm going to switch over here to the materials industry list and show you this layout here. The materials sector is divided into nine different industry groups. I have them here sorted by relative strength ratio and you can see the weekly RRG here on the right. Now currently five of the nine groups are seen with rising vectors indicating that investor interest is high and growing. Now three of these industry groups are presently here in the leading quadrant. Two of them are seen moving higher in this quadrant. There are two groups over in the improving quadrant. Both also are seen with rising momentum. And there's one down here in the lagging quadrant that's also showing rising momentum. Let's first look at some price charts of these industry groups and then we'll pick a couple of groups and look at the list of stocks within that group that are on the rise. Let's start here with the aluminum index which has been rising nicely for the past year in a strong parallel trend channel. Now, there's been a period of short uh, sideways price action here in the past month as it digests these strong gains. Overhead resistance coming in uh, 108 to 115 and then a secondary one here at 141. There are a couple of more resistance levels to breach before this index uh, reaches all-time high levels that were set back in April of 2019 around the 190 to 195 level. So definitely more upside, I believe, is uh, available here in this aluminum group. Next is the non-ferrous metals. This index has also been traversing higher in a parallel trend channel. And the momentum, the recent momentum decline that we've seen here in this group, here's it in the RRG again, this recent decline here is evidenced by this sideways price consolidation that's been ongoing since, uh, oh, mid-February, I would say here. Now, all-time highs on this index were last set in January 2011 at the 775 level. So the potential here to continue in this uptrend I believe is also a possibility. 
I think the consolidation may actually be coming to an end and we could see this vector form a hook back to the north from down here in this weakening quadrant and indeed if you look at the very tip this very last week which represents um, price action through Wednesday this week the arrow is turning so that's my early indication that there may be a hook formation in progress as we come out of this as we come out of this period of consolidation here so very possibly we've set a uh, we've set a new support level here and we could be on a new uptrend we'll just have to continue to monitor that uh, price action there now here is the iron and steel index this group has seen a sharp increase in its uptrend slope rising from about this $210 support level beginning February 1st. The next upside resistance here in this level, index's level is its all-time highs that were set back in February 2011 at the uh, around the $340 level. Now there's nothing saying that these indexes have to stop at those resistance levels but they generally result in extended periods of price consolidation before resuming an uptrend. So here we are back in February 2011, now 10 years later, retesting those all-time highs once again. Okay, so let's look inside these three groups at some specific stocks. We'll switch over here to this layout is the aluminum index, which is composed of about five stocks listed here in the order of their market cap and the relative strength ratio for all of these stocks is very high uh, relative to the S&P as the benchmark. Here's Kaiser Aluminum. So Kaiser is down here in this weakening quadrant and what I want to share with you it's uh, recently declined into the weakening quadrant but it's showing this possible hook formation in the making which could result in this stock returning back here to the leading quadrant. Constellium uh, looks to have a more mature hook formation in progress as it continues to rotate back to the north. Well, let's look at the price action on, on these two stocks. First, Kaiser Aluminum. I'll just bring it in quickly like this. And you can see that we've been in a nice steady uptrend also since about September uh, September uh, 2020 lows here uh, rising in a parallel trend channel starting to get some overlap possibly indicating a uh, some form of diagonal and if we scroll back uh, all-time highs we are have already set all-time highs in Kaiser Aluminum they were established in March 11th at uh, about the 127 level and there's been some consolidation sideways consolidation really since the 22nd as we bounced up into that high so now we've got an overhead resistance target we've got finding support here at the 103 making another little bounce we could have more downside in this or we could have a completion of this and then a continuation of the of the uh, uptrend in play so keep a keep a close eye on this one uh, if we if we tie if we anchor from here to here on the lows we just penetrated this support line a little bit and maybe violated it so that's why we really need to be cautious I wouldn't jump straight in on this one I would certainly keep it on a watch list and look for positive appreciation to penetrate and test again this uh, this all-time high resistance level. Let's look at Constellium and its price chart. And here's what I see on Constellium. This is pre-COVID levels have been uh, have been uh, surpassed, um, challenging some highs back from 2019. And if I scroll way back in time here, I'll find Constellium's all-time high sitting from July 2014 up here at around 32. So there's two, there's another overhead resistance line that I see. We need to be challenged just around uh, 20 to 21 dollars. 
we've got an uptrend in place. I've got a larger parallel channel here. We are riding in the upper half of this parallel trend channel, also in another, uh, here's another uh, support line. So watch this support line for a bounce higher off of this or a break of this support line, which could take you back down to the larger uh, uptrend channel. This is the list of stocks representing the non-ferrous metals group. There's eight stocks in this list. And this group itself has been in a long uh, period of momentum decay. And you can see that by looking at all of these stocks. Almost every stock in here, with the exception of Wheaton, uh, has been in a decay, okay, a downtrend here. So thus, when we looked at the industry group, we saw it, the industry group itself pushing lower. Here's a quick look at their price charts. You can see a strong trend in place with a recent period of consolidation here that may be coming to a close in Southern Copper. Hence our indication of a hook reversal may be in the making. You can't really see it yet uh, in the RRG. Here's Southern Copper moving lower in this RRG and that declining momentum is due to this Price, recent price consolidation that we've seen since about February 22nd. Possibly this consolidation finds its support here at the 65 levels and we reestablish a new uptrend. We'll get back to testing these uh, all-time highs and, uh, and then look for further continuation in this channel. Here's Freeport McMoran. And as you can see, it's also been in a, a beautiful year-long parallel uptrend. It's also seen sideways consolidation as we're seeing it moving down here in our relative rotation. That tells us the period of, of consolidation at play. Here on the very last tick, you can see the change in direction of the arrow is telling me an early indication possibly that this period of consolidation is over. We've been Moving back up, we still got an overhead resistance line here. I want to see breakthrough of that because I really only see one, two, three waves up. I don't have five waves up, but if I get five and then a three wave pullback, we'll look to reestablish an uptrend and uh, break to new, new all time highs and continue the rotation of Freeport back up into the leading quadrant. Now, here is Wheaton. So over here on the RRG, Wheaton is actually in the improving quadrant seen with the northerly vector here. And in this price chart, the downtrend channel here has been broken. So Wheaton's been in a correction since August, possibly finding support here at 35 back in early March. Now look at this downtrend channel here. I want you to see where we've tested the penetration of that November. We tested it in January with one candle higher and then an immediate rejection right back down into the channel. We tested it once again the 1st of February and immediately rejected it. Bounced off of it here in March and then now April 1st, 2nd and onwards we are moving higher into uh, uh, above the channel. So I've converted this from a, uh, a resistance channel to a support channel. And uh, I'm going to be looking to see if these three waves up can continue, make five waves up, three waves back, we have a, an opportunity that we see Wheaton continue uh, higher. Switch over here to the iron and steel tab. Now in this index, there are 30 stocks here, and if you look at the RRG, you can see nearly all of the stocks in this industry group are sporting leading trends, as indicated by the green here. Well, so we look down here in this weakening quadrant, you see a lot of stocks with northerly hooks already forming and uh, completing, and now we've got northerly movement indicating rising momentum coming back in here. Let's look at the uh, the market cap leader Vale is right here and it's just recently formed its northerly hook but again many of these stocks are 
are in this pattern. We'll pull this price chart up here and I'll show you what I'm seeing. Volley's been in a period of consolidation since about January 7th after establishing a high here around $19. It came down and tested the 50-day moving average. Uh, bounced down again at 16, maybe setting up a strong support level there. And now you see it moving impulsively higher back to retest this $19 highs. You'll get a penetration above that. I believe this sideways period of consolidation is over and uh, and we'll be moving higher from there. So I hope you can take these ideas that I've presented to you and apply your own reward risk management and other techniques to establish your trading plan. Remember the trend is your friend so play those stocks in the trend and let them work for you. Having a powerful tool such as Optima to help us drill into the details of sectors and the sector subgroups gives us a key advantage and an ability to be more selective in the stocks which we choose to trade and or add to our portfolio. Best wishes in your trading ventures and be sure to check us out at tradinganalysis.com.